Hello and welcome to another explanation of basic fiber optics. So in the previous videos we've seen that uh, loss can occur inside of optical fibers either because of bending or twisting and even if we don't have that um, just the fact that the glass that makes up the core of the fiber isn't perfect can cause attenuation as the light propagates. So if we're doing telecommunications obviously we would like a strong very intense signal that's easy to detect. So how do we counteract this, uh, this loss while the light is still inside of the glass? And to do that, we can use a device like this called an erbium doped fiber amplifier, or EDFA for short. Uh, this particular unit is actually, well, at least I custom made the, the casing as well as the display here using an Arduino. We had a EDFA unit just sort of lying around without any control circuitry, so I uh, made an Arduino and like a box in order to, to control how much current gets supplied. So, anyway, the point of this device is that if you send light into the input port in a certain region around um, 1550 nanometers, then the light coming out will be much more intense. Now, right now, the EDFA is off, and you can see that the OSA down here is just sweeping. So let's see what happens if I first activate it by pressing this knob here, and then increase the amount of current we supply. Let's see what we see on the screen here. So now it's at, it's just up to 50%, I think it should be enough. Right. So down here on the screen now, we see essentially uh, two things of interest. There is the, um, this line right here, that is the frequency of the pump or the wavelength of the pump laser. So the way an EDFA works is that you have a fiber that is doped with, uh, with erbium. You send a, um, a laser light with, I think it's around uh, 1980, 980 uh, nanometers into the, the erbium that excites the erbium ions and causes like population inversion. And then if like no power is coming in, then they're all just gonna dump the light in this particular region over here. I think this might be another transition line that's like weakly, weakly excited or something. But anyway, the point is that you excite all the urban ions, they get into a state of population version, and then if you have no input, then they just sort of dump out of the light they have randomly out into the fiber, and we get all of, sort of a the kind of characteristic spectrum out here, with like a sharp spike, and then like a nice flat region here. And in fact, if we zoom into that a little bit, let me center this around 1550. So, and maybe reduce the span slightly to, I don't know, just like a hundred nanometers should be enough. And I might also change the resolution a little bit because this is quite broad. Let's see what we get. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we have this fat region right here where the gain, or the amount of light getting output is actually almost the same. And this is around 1550. That's really convenient because most of the telecom signals we use are in this particular wavelength region. So the point is now that if we send a light signal into the EDFA up here, into this port, then the um, incoming light is going to cause stimulated emission and all this power that's being emitted just randomly in all kinds of frequencies now are going to be sort of dumped into the input frequency and therefore it's going to be amplified. So let's actually see that in action. Okay, so here we see the output spectrum of this handheld laser at 1550 and as I explained in the previous video it has this sort of interesting comb structure because it's actually kind of a cheap and junky laser and also the power coming out is not terrifically high, it's only like 7.3 something dBm, or negative 7.3 dBm. So let's actually see what happens if we plug this laser into the EDFA and then plug that EDFA into the, into the OSA. So let me undo this one and get it cleaner, like so. And plug that into the output of the EDFA. And actually, maybe I should, if I'm smart about it, go to the trace menu and fix this one. And then go to B, write it, and then make this sweep repeatedly. Oh, sorry, I think I forgot to go to trace and also display it. So that's better. Okay, so now we're going to take the handheld laser and plug it into the EDFA up here. So let's remove the cap. Clean the end fiber, yes, and plug it in, and let's see what happens. All right, that is very interesting. So you can see now, if we go down to the screen here, you notice that the yellow spikes sort of stop right here, but after we've inserted this uh, laser into the EDFA, we have much more intense central spikes right now. They have much more power. So you can see that we had some amplification going on, which is uh, exactly what we wanted. One thing to also keep in mind is that right now this um, EDFA, oh, sorry, this OSA clearly has a noise floor here, so 
in some kind of measure any power that's lower than this. But in reality, um, you'll have for well, the yellow trace here just a spike, and then basically something that drops down to uh, negative infinity here, and then you have a next spike. But for the purple trace now, you'll notice that all of these spikes are sort of sitting on top of a, um, of a certain like noise floor here. That's kind of an important thing to keep in mind when you use amplifiers. If you use an amplifier, you can increase or boost the peak power you have for each one of these wavelengths, but it comes to the cost of also adding extra noise that sort of sits on top on. So a really important thing to keep in mind when you do um, sort of telecommunications and analysis is to figure out the signal to noise ratio, which is essentially the, the peak power you have here relative to the amount of noise power in like a small band right around that, that central, central frequency. So anyway, I hope that uh, sort of instructs you on how to use EDFAs. Think about if there's anything more we can do with this, so stay tuned. Oh yes, one small thing before we, uh, we go. This device here is a high gain EDFA, so essentially it specializes in taking in very weak signals and then putting up to a very high, uh, high power that's detectable. But you also have other kinds of EDFAs, you have sort of normal EDFAs that take like moderate powers and then boost them a bit more. You also have um, high power EDFAs that can take um, sort of moderately strong input signals and boost up to like well, you, even a couple of watts sometimes, which is a huge amount of power if you consider the fact that an optical fiber has a cross-section of a couple of square micrometers. Um, so anyway, really interesting devices, um, definitely worth understanding in detail.